welcome to the Rosen Report. I'm Paul Rosen. And the special guest today is Dan Berlin. Welcome, Dan. Hey, great to be here, Paul. Dan was born on July the 26th, 1973. Paul, can I interrupt you for a second? You certainly can. Am I even allowed to call you Paul? No. Because in all the time I've known you, yeah. it's Rosie yeah. or bust. Rosie. So let me just let me just say, hey, Rosie. Yeah. It's that, amazing. You know it's amazing to be here. The guy, Paul, I was just talking yeah. about, I've actually never met him. Okay. So. I nice, appreciate to, it. nice to be Thanks, here. Thanks, brother. Nice to be here, my man. So Dan was born on July 26, 1973. Not as old as me, uh, 1960, but still he's, uh, he's been around. Dan is a coach of the Maccabee Open men's team, which I had the honor of being one of his assistant coaches. Uh, Dan teaches sports journalism at Ryerson, Ryerson, one of the most prestigious uh, universities now. Ryerson has come a long, long way. Yeah, and always been one of the top journalism schools in yeah. this country. Yeah, so and it's in agreed. beautiful downtown Toronto. It is. And Dan now works for CTV. He's an analyst with uh, football and baseball, a prognosticator. I am. Which is, I had to, all morning I had to uh, go over that word that I wasn't going to blow it. Well, a, a prognostication and predictions, yeah. and yeah. I'm going to just say that this is, this is going to be basically like the equivalent of the Broncos and the Super Bowl right here, which I, cool. picked, which I picked, by the way. You did. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else went Carolina. Yeah. And uh, the easy dab and even, and even before had New England over Denver, and yes. I, I, rode, I rode the Broncos. I literally uh, rode the Stallion into I, the sunset. I remember. For, yeah. uh, for a big Super Bowl win. Yeah. And uh, did you get any shackles on that one? Uh, you know, a few. Yeah. A few. I, it's funny, when it comes to picking sports, it, you know, I've watched sports and lived and breathed sports for, right. you know, all 43 years of my life. From, you know, even within the womb, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Right. You know, uh, my mom had like a little transistor next to me. So I like sports is like mm -hmm. in my blood. Yeah. So I, I just love the challenge uh, of being able to pick games. And much of it is based on a feel. I, I always mm -hmm. feel like when you watch sports for such a long time, you really get an understanding of, yeah. of how teams work. Yeah. And I always look, and Paul, Rosie, you yeah. and I can speak to it. You yeah. know, when it comes down to it, it's about understanding what makes a winning team. And yeah. I always feel like yeah. you and I understand that better than most. Yes. So what I saw in Denver was a, a winning defense. I saw that defense yeah. that wasn't going to be denied, and ultimately they were able to ride. It's not pure talent, and we've talked about that. It is not pure talent. It's not about Cam Newton or the best player all the time. It's that group that can mesh together, especially in football, where it's one game, and, uh, and then you're, you, you move on. Well, yeah, it's, it's often the best team and, got, and the players who can rise to the occasion. To the occasion. Yeah. So we just saw it in basketball. You know, you, you look at like LeBron James, for example, and he's receiving all the accolades now for his ability to rise to the occasion Absolutely. versus Steph Curry, who is the league yeah. MVP, who couldn't rise to the occasion. And then because he couldn't rise to the occasion, they ended up in second place. Yeah. Which is a whole interesting concept because that game, that whole series, and, and ultimately LeBron James's legacy yeah. came down to the final minute of okay. Game 7. His entire legacy came down to that moment. And in that moment, it was his teammate, Kyrie Irving, yeah. who hit the three-pointer who secured LeBron James's legacy. Right. As, you know, what now many people yeah. are saying is like top three NBA player of all time. Yeah. And, which, which I found curious. Yeah, and, and you know what? The one thing that, I, that, that I'll speak on with, with that, I don't care how great you are, a superstar athlete, you need that supporting cast. And you need that supporting cast to come up big in that one maybe second where it's going to ultimately make you look great. Right. But they're the one that's going to make. Because in five years, nobody's going to remember Kyrie Irving shot. They're going to remember LeBron James being the man bringing the championship to Cleveland. 100%. Yeah. I think, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Because I actually brought something here uh -oh. today to share, uh -oh. with, share with everyone. And just, just to sort of reiterate, reiterate what Paul and I were talking about, Rosie, I should say, um, is that we coached together for a number of years. Uh, Rosie and I uh, were coach and assistant coach for, as you mentioned, the, the McCubby uh, Team Canada. It was actually men's softball that we coached together in. And, and this was really a, a very special team. Uh, we went to Israel in 2013, uh, just lost out on the gold medal, losing to the U.S. in a hard-fought gold medal game. Yep. But not only, not only that, we also uh, had a chance to coach uh, young baseball players together as well. We coached a team uh, in a local baseball organization here in Toronto, uh, Leaside Baseball Association. 
and, and had a wonderful experience coaching 14-year-old uh, kids as well. Um, but you introduced something to the team, and as a coach, it was something that I really valued, and it sort of ties in everything we've been talking about, right. about what it means to not only be the best player on a team, but how you're only the, you're only the sum of all parts, and in many ways, only as good as your weakest link. link. Yes. Uh, what I brought here, everybody, these are two links from the two teams that Paul or Rose, I, I'm going to say Paul because I'm being formal today, yeah. but he's Rosie. Right. That Rosie and I coach together. And it's a great opportunity. These are something I cherish, I carry with me. I used to use as a keychain, but got a little too heavy uh, uh, to carry around. But they, they are kept in a special place. And I think, Rosie, it's a great opportunity for you to tell the story of what this link represents as part of the chain. Sure. So when we went to, uh, to Torino, Italy in 2006, we were ranked number four in the world. We had no chance to win. But our coach, Jeff Snyder, who had just had a tragic uh, accident in his family, his nephew Dan Snyder with the Atlanta Thrashers was killed in a tragic car accident. He brought in the chain. And what the chain represented was 15 links, or as many people uh, are on that team, so with us, it was 15 links, 15 individual links. Each person on the team took their link and uh, dedicated the games to one person, one special person to them, linked to the guy beside them. And when it was completely done, the, the links were a complete chain. And every day or every game, you grabbed that chain, you talked about what it meant. The, the best player on the team got to take that chain and bring it back. And ultimately, when the tournament or the games were over, everybody got their original link back. And we knew how it was by marking the first link and all the way down, knowing who was the next one and the next one sure. and the next one. And uh, when we did our teams, you were first, and then we went down. Because you always have the head coach, who is the number one guy, and everything leads down from him. Because in, in sport, in my opinion anyways, you can't, you can't achieve greatness in a team sport without the leadership of a coach. Well, and I, to speak to the leadership, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I always look at as my role as a coach is there to serve the other coaches and to ultimately serve the players. So, you know, really there are, there are opportunities where I have to make some tough decisions and you, you tend to live and die by those decisions and we sort of equate winning uh, on the field and the final score and the result is the definition of what truly winning and losing is all about. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it's a special honor to really have a chance to coach, whether it's young kids in baseball, whether it's the chance to coach, um, you know, Jewish athletes going to Israel representing their country. I mean, both are equally special and, and unique. But ultimately, uh, what, what I think you brought to this team with, with this chain, with this link, and these are my two links from our two teams together, is it did such an incredible job of not only motivating and inspiring our athletes to want to play for each other and right. to want to play together and to want to strive for higher goals. But what I also think that you really did is that um, you gave an identity to the team where it wasn't strictly going to be individual performances. Right. And just to bring that back to what you described where Kyrie Irving for Cleveland hits the winning shot, in right. many ways that was the end result of a very special team that could count on each other. And right. at any moment, any player could be called upon sure. in the moment to have to step up. And when I look back at these two teams, Rosie, um, you know, regardless of the final result, we, we were ultimately winners. And, and we're now, you know, these are brothers yeah. for life. Yeah. And like I said, when, when Jeff really wanted to get across to the team when we originally did it, with our team, we had 15 players. So it was 15 hearts one beat and the outcome you always want to win you know you win, want to win the gold medal you want to win the championships you want kids to strive for that ultimate goal winning but winning isn't the bottom line so you learn much more i played in three olympic games and and won a gold medal in one of them the other two we didn't but i learned more about myself from losing than actually from winning i gotta uh, we're gonna go to a, a couple of things um that I really want to touch on. Number one is from an athlete to, to, to a journalist, to teaching journalism. Then you go into a different role of being on a Metro Morning sure. and, and doing the news, right. doing the sports, which is still is news. You're, you're That's sitting in a different, um, you know, different aspect. It, it's not like 
talking sports, you're, you're reporting on sports. How did you find that? Well, I always had a passion, Rosie, to be on camera. For whatever reason, uh, from my early days, I, I just loved being on camera. I loved having a chance to talk to people about sports. It was my passion. It drove me every day. I mean, from learning statistics to reading every story I could about athletes and about the games themselves, I had this insatiable appetite right. to, to watch, eat, live, breathe sports. Uh, so. You know, as my career wore on, I, I had, I've had a chance to work nearly 20 years in sports media in this country. I was a producer for, for many years at a national network, and it, it sort of morphed into my two current roles on air, one being on CBC Radio on Metro Morning, and the other of which is on CTV News Channel, where I do my football analysis and right. predictions. And it's funny, because a lot of people look at me and they say, and it's not much different than this. Right. Because really what it is, is you're having a conversation, whether it's face to face with somebody or the chance to impart your wisdom yes. on those. But really what it is, is it's sharing stories. And what, there is something about sports that has given meaning and purpose to my life. So when I, I get to watch the Blue Jays and a rookie player, I remember one of the stories we told was when Devin Travis right. had his uh, debut at Yankee Stadium and he homered in his debut. And you could just, through watching him, both in terms of his post-game reaction and that moment when he hit the home run, right. you can feel what he's feeling. It, it, yeah. It's so emotional yeah. that that opportunity to bring that feeling, that emotion to the masses is really what I'm trying to do. And sometimes it's a little serious and a little heartfelt. We talk about concussions in yep. sport and it's yep. serious and it needs to be discussed. What I always like to look at though, I do like to look at the positive side of sport because I think in a world where there's a lot going on, a lot of negativity, we can use sport as a wonderful outlet to both be healthy physically and mentally, but use it as just a way to say, hey, you know what, this is, this is a healthy outlet. And, yeah. that, and that's what I, I get a chance to do on air. It's a special, uh, I, I consider myself and, privileged. And you do it well, and a lot of people can't do it. It is not as easy when you're sitting in, in your comfortable living room and you're thinking, ah, oh, that guy, the, the, the average fan, goes, oh, goes a bum, he can't do this, he can't do that. Try it. It is not as easy as it looks or as good journalists or good reporters make it look. Um, that That's what I love about watching color guys and uh, and 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 play-by-play -play guys do the game is when it looks great and looks easy. I love, personally, I love w watching and listening to good announcers in baseball. I love Dan Schulman. I, love, I used to love driving home from practice and listening to the radio and listening to Sunday Night Baseball with Dan Schulman because he made me feel like I was in the stadium. Sure. And I know you feel the same way. This is Paul Rosen for The Rosen Report, and we'll be back after these messages. The National Benefit Authority helps people with disabilities receive the disability tax credit from the Canadian government. We navigate all obstacles with you to determine your eligibility and position you best for a successful 10-year retroactive claim and receive up to $20,000 for an adult and $50,000 for a child. The National Benefit Authority went back 10 years and got me money I didn't even know was mine. Get the money you deserve. Call us at one 855-456-6688. What's your Twitter handle, Dan? At uh, Dan underscore Berlin. Okay, pretty simple. Um, it's been fantastic. It's Paul Rosen on the Rosen Report, powered by the National Benefit Authority with Dan Berlin. Dan, um, I'm going to ask you a, a fairly heavy question right now. Okay. So um, if Dan Berlin now, sitting in this chair, could go back and talk to the 15-year-old Dan Berlin, what would you say to him? What a great question. You know, interestingly, Rosie, I was just thinking about that the other day. Really? Because when I was 15, I was a pretty good baseball player. And uh, I never ended up going anywhere in baseball. I did get some college offers to play in, in the U.S. But back then, when I was growing up, the dollar was worth 65 cents on the right. U.S. dollar and I could get a great education in Canada for a fraction of the price, and that was ultimately where I ended up. I would say this much, you know, there's two things that I think can help drive young people. The first of which is, do your best to figure out what you're good at and what you love to do, because if you do those things, you, it almost feels like you never work a day in your life. Uh, the second part, though, is the discipline and hard work 
that is required to succeed in this world. So um, one of the great lessons that I've learned in sport and when we work together, Rosie, because I think from a perseverance standpoint, I don't know anyone that embodies it more than you. And it's an ins that's what inspires me when I'm around you is your, your dedication and the perseverance is that um, you're going to get knocked down sometimes, but at the end of the day, you pick yourself back up and you never stop working hard. If you want something badly enough, uh, go for it. And I think when I was 15 years old, I wasn't taught those principles. So when I work with youth now, I try to really tell young people about that because it's, it's a tough world when you're my age, right. but when you're 15 and trying to figure it all out, uh, you know, sometimes you can kind of coast on your smartphone and just be on Facebook all day. At the end of the day, you really have to put in the work and the more work you put in, I think the more you get out. So had I maybe done more reps and applied myself more, you know, maybe I could have had more of a playing career, but at the end of the day, no regrets. Right. I mean, baseball has been very, very good to me as yeah. the old saying goes. And now I get this chance to coach the team in Israel next summer again. So. And you have a great family. Great wife, great kids, everything's great. Hey, listen, it you, uh, could be a lot worse, right? Yeah. All healthy. You know, the uh, one thing I'm going to, uh, where am I here? I'm going to look in the camera right now. And I, I just want to say, if for any reason somebody gets a copy of the Rosen Report to Cam Newton, uh, quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, I will tell him straight up, you're a phenomenal player. Learn from what happened to you last year in the Super Bowl. Learn from losing. Some of the greatest things in life, lessons in life, come from losing. You can't, in my opinion, and I know in Dan's opinion too, you cannot truly appreciate winning in sport or in life until you've truly understood what losing means. So Cam, to you, figure out what happened in that Super Bowl, how you acted after the game, pull your socks up, and do it again this year, but do it the right way. This is Paul Rosen for the Rosen Report. Dan Berlin, this has been fantastic. Get your seatbelt, strap it on now, because it's time for Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire is powered by the National Benefit Authority, and we're ready to go. You ready? Born ready. All Let's ready. do this. Favorite movie? Bull Durham. Excellent. Favorite restaurant? I thought you were going to say favorite wrestler. No. Favorite, <laughs> I have one of those too. Favorite okay. restaurant? I would say anything Italian. Okay. Uh, okay, we're going to throw it then. I'll, a, a new one I'm throwing in. Favorite wrestler? Rowdy Roddy Piper. There you go. Uh, name of your first pet? Ruby. That's, Ruby's your first? I have, a, I have an English bulldog, everybody. Right and, uh, her name's Ruby. She's four years old. And I did grow up with the dog, but she's the love of my life. Oh, beauty. And a great dog. First car? Uh, the Toyota Corolla. Actually. That's not bad. No, it's, you know, cheap wheels, A to B. Yeah. did the trick. I'm still a Toyota guy, if you must know. I had a Dodge Polaris. It was, like, brutal. Oh, yeah? It cost me 50 bucks back in, I think it was 1977. There you go. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Good radio, though, which is critical to a car. Favorite band? Uh, fish. Really? Yeah. Haven't I'm, had that answer I'm a, yet. I'm a fish head. I'm actually okay. going to see them play a few shows on the summer tour. All coming right. Up. Yeah. Oh, well, great. I'm not a fish guy, but that's, uh, that's why we live in Canada. It's a great Sorry. country. Favorite country? Canada. Okay. Favorite city? San Diego. Well, yeah, I just got back from I San Diego. I saw that on, on, uh, on Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 80 degrees every day. Yeah. And listen, I, I do love Canada. Yeah. Canada is where I was born and raised. Yeah. But uh, 80 degrees every day. Great ballpark, uh, too, eh? Great ballpark. Kid loved the San Diego Zoo. It's, it's not too big a town. So There's it was an old no, family thing. You took yeah, the family out. Yeah. Yeah, I are. know this is supposed to be rapid fire, but Dan Berlin and Paul Rosen <laughs> cannot do rapid fire. We do rapid, slow fire. Yeah. It's yes. like a slow a burn. Slow it's cooking. like embers. Yeah, right? it's, it's like uh, pulled pork. You yeah. know, it's got to be like three, <laughs> four hours. hours yeah, and then it'll be ready. ready but sure. then it, the, the final product is incredible. Yes, that's true. Favorite sport. Falls off the bone. Yeah. Um, Favorite sport is baseball. Me too. Okay. Last question, Dan. It's been an absolute uh, incredible uh, opportunity for me to have you on the Rosen Report. If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Uh, I think I would make guns illegal south of the border in the U.S. You know what? 
We, we did not talk before the show. Um, and I had a, a chat with, with Carolyn, who's backstage and does a lot of things. And, and she asked me yesterday these same questions who, you know, I don't get to answer uh, on, on camera. And, and the one thing I said when I, she asked me if I could change one thing in the world, it's exactly what I said. You know, get rid of the guns, especially in the States. But we do not need, we don't get political here, but we do not need guns. Why do people need, and especially a gun that can shoot, you know, 50 rounds in 12 seconds. What, what, what point is that? Well, I think we're finding out there's no point, and it leads to a lot of unnecessary killings yeah. and deaths, and uh, I'd love to see that come to an end. Yeah, and it's extremely sad. You know what, I'm going to take it one, uh, one step further, because I love having Dan on. His insight, uh, his knowledge um, is, is fantastic. I love picking his brain when it comes to sport, and I could not... And with rapid fire, have to add one more thing in. Recently, I know Dan is a huge boxing fan, as I am. You know, back in the day, watching it in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, Muhammad Ali was, was a huge inspiration in a lot of things I did as a kid. Um, I want to get your perspective on the great Muhammad Ali. Yeah, you know, I was, my father was a huge boxing fan, and I, I did grow up with boxing and have a great appreciation for the sweet science. You know, when I look back, I didn't get a chance to see Ali fight, uh, which, you know, just goes for the era that I was born in. He had right. just retired when I was starting to get into boxing. I, I would watch guys like Mike Tyson. I, I watched his entire career. But when I, when I look back, and I'm a bit of a historian as a journalist, I've certainly read a lot about Ali. And, you know, listen, I think he's, a, he's the, the type of personality who, who galvanized um, really the world over when it came to what he represented. He was an ambassador of sport. He is one of those rare athletes who completely transcended his sport. But what I do like about Ali, ultimately, is that he was a man of conviction. Right. And really, as a coach, as a person, you know, at some point, you have to decide what it is you stand for, and you have to draw that line, and how can you not respect a man, or any person for that matter, who draws a line for what they believe are the right reasons and stands behind and stands behind that. And for those reasons, Muhammad Ali, you know, ranks not only as the greatest boxer of all time, but truly and arguably the greatest athlete of right. all time. Couldn't have said it better. Can it end, find a way to end the Rosen Report better than that. My dad. I thought, thought maybe me, we'd go like we could. exchange a few. We, we could. Old, that seemed like the, the old, segue to me. Old school. Okay. We're, we're not going to, but. This here, that's my dad taught me my entire life, that your handshake is everything. All of you watching out there, no matter where you're watching in the world, the Rosen Report, let's bring back the integrity of a handshake. I'm going to end this show by shaking the hand of a guy who I respect a ton, Dan Berlin. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's been uh, the Rosen Report. I'm Paul Rosen. He's Dan Berlin. This is powered by the National Benefit Authority. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.